state laying claim to territories structures want, they wish to control every last thing everywhere. They would like to uh, bottle up the air and regulate the consumption of air, attach money to it, just like in that one movie, uh, The One Slur, I think that was it whatever that Dr. Seuss movie was. Uh, and of course, the beginning to the regulation of hydrogen-oxygen mix is oxygen bars. It all, everything that comes into the realm is introduced in some uh, innocent fashion before it turns into grab, 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 gimme, 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 control, 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 that type of thing. So an oxygen bar is uh, a step towards let's regulate all of the oxygen. And then, of course, you can see how this could be done if a, a machine could take care of that task for you. Look at water. You wouldn't even have to um, take away the ability to breathe regular air. You don't have to somehow separate off the people from the oxygen. You just get them to believe that that's harmful. <laughs> and that the bottled oxygen is better. The same thing that they've done with the water, right? The water, we have 10,000 different uh, varieties of bottled water. And uh, people have the impression that tap water is nasty, uh, seawater has got uh, all kinds of contaminants and deer poop and everything that's bad for you. So it's better for you, more healthy, less contaminants, if you drink uh, bottled water. And the same thing with air. You don't even have to be necessarily convinced that that air is unhealthy because we already know that that air is unhealthy and we know that it has been poisoned and uh, infiltrated with all kinds of different uh, unnatural elements that we have created. Uh, so... The control structures would like to control every last thing that exists. And I use the word thing in a very broad sense. The final frontier is not space. They don't give a shit about space. And that's a very misunderstood concept anyway. I don't think a lot of people understand what it is meant by that word space. Space is simply <laughs> the void which uh, objects may reside in. We're in space right here. Otherwise it would be all solid or it would be all air or all nothing. Space is non-object areas. And that's, of course, to the gross sensory perception. Even if you zoom in, the, the, uh, the space is filled with some sort of particulate matter. And, of course, you know, you can go into that rabbit hole and find out about quantum mechanics and quarks and disappearing electrons and all this. But, uh, yeah, the final frontier isn't space. The final frontier is mind. Mind is where these entities are, uh, and, and to say the final frontier as if this is some new concept would be of course completely uh, inaccurate as well, but uh, in terms of 
real estate that people don't uh, talk about as much as they talk about, say, land ownership uh, or company uh, stakes, things like that. Mind is not the final frontier, it's the only frontier. And that's where all of the real heavy, uh, that's where the real heavy lifting goes, that's where the programming gets directed at, that's where every single custom, every single uh, social norm, all of the, all of the anxiety, angst, the negative, darker emotions, the positive emotions, every, literally everything is in mind, like I said earlier, mind is everything, and that's where the space is being uh, bought and sold. Companies literally buy pieces of your mind via advertisements and they essentially buy more shares of your mind space by buying more advertisements. Because if you think about it and you think of the company that's most relevant in your mind, how did they become relevant in your mind, right? They became relevant in your mind because repetition, repetition, repetition. Now, most of these large companies are the most, they have the most mundane possible, boring possible advertisements. And uh, we don't like them as advertisements because they're boring. Yet they still, they still occupy space in our mind. We remember jingles, we remember catchphrases, we remember logos, we remember all these things. And the thing is, is the human brain doesn't have, the human brain does have access to mind, but it can only retain a, a finite amount of information. So companies, uh, ideologies, religions, personal opinions, self-opinions, all of these things, these thought forms are battling for space within your personal brain, which is a slice of mind. A segment. Because the problem is, in a, in a subjective populate-as-you-go realm, if you're comparing it to game theory, the problem is humans forget things okay we don't we don't just remember everything if something is hammered into our our brain over and over and over okay we start to remember that and the thing is in a populate as you go realm <laughs> if if a, a thing out there is trying to vie for space inside of our mind inside of our brain uh, it has to do some work to do that because if we don't have it hitting somehow on a regular basis, we forget about it and it is seen as irrelevant as most of these companies actually are. They're, they're pushing sort of nonsense stuff, uh, but then they're not all pushing nonsense stuff. Some of it, you know, of course is good for us. We need some form of uh, communication, electronics, and so it's not, all, it's not all bad, but we can only hold a finite amount of information and the companies are competing over bits of real estate inside of your mind. And it's not just companies, it's also artists, songs, uh, hobbies, television shows. Literally every hour of your day is being competed for with your mental space because your mental space dictates how you move through the realm, how you swim through the ether. It's dictated through your mind composite structure. And that is molded and shaped by all of these inputs that we receive through various methods, whether it be looking at a giant billboard, hearing a dumbass, boring, mundane commercial on the radio a billion times in a row on Pandora, which I don't have to do anymore, thankfully. Or uh, if you're watching TVs, you know, it's the same. It's repetition, repetition. Repetition bangs home whatever ideal or... Uh, world structure that they would like to see out here because it starts in the mind. It doesn't start out there, it starts in the mind. If you want to build something, you got to have the workers feeling like they ought to be building that thing for you. So then you got to give them a reason to build. 
So then you gotta bring in monetary systems. Then you gotta make sure that they can't get the things that they need to get unless they have the monetary system. So the, the control structures go back and back and back and back and back and back. And at the very base of the control structure is fear uh, and lack. I.e., if you don't use this control structure that we have set up, whoever that may be, uh, you're going to be homeless, or you're not going to be able to eat, or you're not going to be able to have a roof over your head, or you're not going to have protection against vagrants and vagabonds and thieves and robbers and crackheads. So it's always a reverse motivation, as in, if you don't do this, something will either be not available, it will be taken away, or you'll be forcefully done something to, as in you'll go to jail, or you'll be relocated to a, a home, or you're going to go to the loony bin, or so on, so on, and so forth. We have, you know, of course, uh, we have very many fun places to send people after they've been deemed as uh, unworthy human beings, or unsafe, or whatever. There are many, many methods for this. But it's all about real estate in your mind, and that's, again, why I talk about meditation, because meditation makes your mental real estate less accessible to the forces that would love to infiltrate and set up camp in there and have you doing this, that, and the other thing throughout your day for them, because it's not for you. And that's all I have for today.